have the case in the box. I just found out that this edge here is not exactly straight. And a couple of blocks of wood, and I'm trying to persuade it to go back down. I think it's been hit in the middle there and pushed back with this little two screws holding the cover. It didn't provide the support that it needed in the center. Well, that's it. Oh, using a bit of persuasion, I think I think it's pretty good. Maybe not even be perfect, but it's not strong, but better than it was. Oh, now I need to get the um, four holes for the ETX power supply drill. Let's get on that one. Oh, well, some. Um, Two millimeter holes. And now we're gonna try and go for four. I don't think that'll be big enough to do some tolerance. Yep, it's those holes. We decided to go for four and a half. It's, I mean, it's definitely won't have a problem getting the screws in. I need to cut out a little bit of metal. I need enough space to power supply on the input and switch. And if you have some space to pull them. Well, that's cut out. I might have a little space on the hole should be radically in the right place for the power supply. Well, oh, cleaned it up a bit. No sharp edges left. Let's hope the power supply fits. I'll oh, scramble through my PC screws and actually found the screw size there. The motherboard at least. And I block the back with a temporary. I know it's black. I don't think I have a silver one. It at least marks the correct slot for an extension I intend to insert. Yeah, over time, so it can be there. I got the disk drive support and power supply support bracket in place and then I took the, the floppy disk drive upper floppy disk drive table out try and find some better nicer looking screws than those oh put some um, thumb screw screws and I can do a toolless removal of this top section here that's the power supply in I must admit that one of the screws is a bit tight. This, this one is that, that hole is a little bit out of alignment. So maybe if I take the next time I take it out, I'm gonna just take a take a little bit of that from this side. Just to take like one more and should be okay. Anyway, ATX power supply. Touch. I decided to use torque space screws for the actual base cover. A little bit nicer to deal with when I'm screwing up the torque out and stuff. But anyway, that's assembled and um, ready to get some more accessories on it. Oh, here's the ATX power supply to. Only the 2000 motherboard connector, so this is the ATX power supply input connector, and then this is the one they put on only the 2000 motherboard. And then it has the switch to start the power supply. Uh, it's a very simple on off switch, so one could actually just have it permanently on and then just leave this in the case, so then one uses the on off switch in the power supply to turn on. Well, I thought maybe. Maybe I'll activate this one since I had a plate that had that kind of hole, but sadly that <laughs> is not the right size. It, um, it's too small. As you can see, then the holes don't match. So, so I'm going to have to re-engineer that. Oh, well, anyway, I got to try and make the hole bigger. So I'll use this tool to pull it out. Oh, that's the hole. So I need to make the. Some small holes. 
No, still really strong. Got to clean up. And I actually tested this alignment and it seems to be good enough. Just have to find some screws. Some two screws in place and. And I actually do have a hat for that. A red button on top of that. Button cap. So, oh, that's the motherboard in. Nothing well, needs, but the screw that goes through the connector needs to be a longer one, so I have to actually see if I can find one. I mean, it's actually quite secure as it is, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just skip those. There's one here, and then there's one on the connector in the back. Oh, found a nice screw for that. And I put one on the other side underneath there also. Forgot to film it. So, that's the power supply connected in, the motherboard connector in, and switch in place. So, anyway, I added a little red cap to the switch and turned it on. And I got no smoke and a picture. Now, this unit suffers from a bit of a typical um, Amiga 2000 reset circuitry. Not always working the way it's supposed to, so yeah. So, just a few power on, power off cycles did it Good working. Anyway, so. Last step in this assemble for now is to see if I can get the cover on. Well, that seemed to work out okay. Put the cover on. Had to move it around a bit and adjust to push and pull here and there, but I got it all straight. So, anyway, um, I think there's something missing here. Yeah, some drives are needed. So, anyway. This will be part one of the assembly stuff, so if you're interested in following up and I rig some storage stuff to it and put other stuff on all the time, then um, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified. See you in the next one.